Kellogg's Pep. The super delicious cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. And today, as our brand new story unfolds, Clark Kent and Perry White are stunned by the strange behavior of Lois Lane. We'll join them in a moment, but right now, here's a word from your announcer. You know, uh, if you were the only fellow or girl in the world who was collecting those swell comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep, well, it wouldn't be half as much fun. No, what makes it exciting is that so many of your friends are collecting them, too, so that you can compare notes on how, how you're getting along. And you can even trade duplicates with each other. And it really means something when you show up with all your comic buttons pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap for everybody to see how many you've collected. And you know, what makes it even more fun is that these white enamel buttons are so doggone smart looking. Take Moon Mullins, for instance, with his derby hat sitting over one eye and his big black cigar. Or Superman himself in bright blue jersey and flying red cape. Yes, sir, you get a real thrill when you add any of these 18 different buttons to your collection. That is, whenever Mom opens a new package of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Because that's the only way you can get these swell comic buttons. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. You just look for your exclusive prize in packages of P-E-P Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. Yesterday, editor Perry White startled Clark Kent by telling him that Lois Lane, star girl reporter, had resigned from the Daily Planet. He said Lois had been acting strangely for several days and had accused him of persecuting her. Just then, Lois entered White's office in a highly emotional state, accused the gray-haired editor of trying to drive her out of her mind, and while White and Kent stood frozen in horror, she pulled a pistol from her handbag and leveled it at the editor. I'm going to put a bullet in that ugly, scheming brain of yours. Goodbye, Mr. White. Then as Lois's finger tightens on the trigger, Kent leaps forward. <laughs> Give me that gun, Lois. No, I... Give it to me, I said. Oh. There. Now, what's the matter with you? I don't know. Oh... Kent, Kent, what happened? It's all right, Chief. She just fainted. Get some water, will you? But you, she shot you. Oh, don't be silly. How could she shoot me? Get some water. Yeah, she did, I tell you. You, you jumped right in the path of the bullets. I, I saw well, you. Will you? Mr. White, Mr. Kent, what happened? Come in here, Jim, and close the door, will you? Okay. Gosh. It's all right, everybody. Just a little joke. Nobody was hurt. Close the door, Jim. And lock it. Okay. But what were those shots? What's the matter with Miss Lane? She fainted, that's all. Uh, get me that bottle of water on the chief's desk, will you? Yeah, sure, but, but I, what uh, I can't understand it. She, she shot you, Kent. Oh. What? Lois shot Mr. Don't Kent. talk nonsense, either of you. Do I look as if I've been shot? But you were. I saw oh, it. He looks all right to me. Of course I am. Give me the water, Jim, please. Here you are. Look, Come. will someone please tell me what happened in here? Lois went off her head for a minute, that's all. That's all? She tried to shoot me. Huh? I thought you said she tried to shoot Mr. Ken. No, no, no. She tried to shoot me. Then Ken jumped Please in. Please be and... quiet, both of you. I'm trying to bring her to. Here, Lois. Lois, mm. drink this. Oh, I don't get it. You Come said... On. He mm. said... Quiet, please. Mm. Take it easy, Lois. That's mm. yeah, so enough. Here, drink a little water. Mm -mm. All right. That's... Gee whiz, I can't figure this out. Why would Miss Lane try to shoot you, Chief? I mean, Mr. White. Because she's nutty as a fruitcake, that's why. Holy smokes. What'd you do with the gun, Kent? I got it in my pocket. Uh, how do you feel, Lois? I'm all right. Why am I lying here? What What happened? You got a little excited and fainted. I did. A little uh, excited. It's a miracle we're both alive. Why, if Chief, hadn't... Mr. White says you tried Jim. to shoot... Now, don't pay any attention to them, Lois. Here, come on, I'll help you into a chair. Oh, what is this all about? It is. Wait a minute. I seem to remember. Well, don't try to think now. Just relax for a moment. Something was driving me. I couldn't stop myself. It it was as if my brain was on fire. Your brain was on fire? Now, you see, I told Please, you. Please, Chief. Yes. The last few days, I've had spells like that. Ever since... The cat. The what? She said cat. Now, what's a cat got to do with you trying to murder me? I tried to murder you. I don't think we should talk about it now, Lois. You need a rest. You've evidently been under a terrific strain. Now, wait a minute. I've got to talk about it, Clark. I can't keep it to myself anymore. Oh. I'll go crazy if I do. Oh, gosh, what is it, Miss Lane? You'd better make it good, Lois. I don't like being shot at. I'm sorry. 
I couldn't help myself. Oh, I wish I were dead. Now, now, Louis, it's all right. You should realize she's sick, Chief. Oh, don't cry, Miss Lane. Please don't. No, you're right, Kent. Now, there, there, Lois. Now, now, it's all right, all right. I know you didn't mean to do it. Now, stop crying and tell us about it. I will. I must. Only, you won't believe me. You'll say that... You'll say I'm out of my mind. Oh, no, we won't, will we, Mr. Kent? Of course not. Now, pull yourself together, Lois. You know you can count on us. Oh, yes, of course. Now, tell us what's bothering you. We'll do everything we can to help you. All right, I'll, I'll tell you. On, on Christmas Day, somebody sent me a cat for present. A beautiful fawn-colored Siamese with blue eyes. Well, who sent it to you? I don't know, Jim. There was a big red bow tied around his neck, and there was a card attached to it. And the card said, Merry Christmas from an admiring reader. Oh, one of your fans. I suppose so. Well, anyway, my sister Diana and a few other people dropped in during the afternoon, and we had lots of fun with the cat. And when I went to sleep that night, it curled up on the foot of my bed. And then, sometime in the middle of the night, it happened. What happened? A voice woke me up. It was calling me. A voice? Whose voice? I didn't know at first. I sat up in bed, listening. At first it was all quiet. And then suddenly, I heard this strange voice calling me. Wake up, Miss Lane. Wake up. Wake up, Miss Lane. I thought someone had broken into my apartment. I was frightened, but I managed to say. Who, who is it? It is I. Who are you? What do you want? I want to warn you. Warn me? What do you mean? You're in great danger, Miss Lane. Danger? Yes. You think I've told myself that, Clark? Oh. I've repeated it over and over, but this cat keeps waking me up in the middle of the night, and it it does talk. Oh, that I gotta see. Well, I mean does. here. Ah, poppycock, a talking cat. There's no such thing. You're tired, Lois. No, you're nervous, and your imagination is working overtime. Now, the thing to do is to see the cat. Nonsense. Get rid of the cat. Send it to the SPCA or something. I can't do that, Chief. Why not? Because don't you see that I must know for sure whether this cat really talks or not? If it does, then I'll know that I'm all right. But if it doesn't, well, then... Then I'll know that I'm going out of my mind. Lois is right, Chief. Come on. Where? To Lois's apartment to see the cat. What for? You don't think it actually talks, do you? That's what we're going to find out. Come on. Shaking his head in disgust, Perry White follows Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen out of his office. What will they see or hear in Lois's apartment? We'll return in a moment to find out. Certain that a Siamese cat given to her for Christmas by an unknown admirer has been talking to her, Lois Lane has brought Clark Kent, Perry White, and Jimmy Olsen to her apartment to see the animal. Kent is now holding the fawn-colored cat in his arms. <coughs> You can't see anything unusual about this cat, Lois. No, except that it talks. Oh, poppycock. We've been here half an hour. If it can talk, why doesn't it say something? Well, let's hear you talk, Kitty. Come on, say something. What's cooking with you, huh? Don't be a bigger chump than you are normally, Olsen. Now, look, Lois, you take a rest. Forget about the office and this, this cat business. We'll take it with us and drop us at the SPCA. I think the chief is right, Lois. No, wait, Clark. You don't think there's anything the matter with me, do you? Oh, of course not. You're just overtired. Yeah, that's what I think, too, Miss sure. Lane. Well, I'm glad you all believe I'm sane. Oh, maybe I did just imagine the cat spoke to me. You all run along, then. I'll take a sedative and get some sleep. No, leave the cat, Jim. Well, I, I think we ought to take it along, Lois. No, I'm sure I'll be all right now, Clark. And I really do want the cat. Go ahead now. I'll be all right. Really, I will. Well, I don't know. Don't argue with her, Kent. Let her see for herself she was mistaken. Now, come on. Come along, Olsen. Okay. So long, Miss Lane. Goodbye, Jim. Bye, Clark. Bye, Lois. Bye, Lois. Get a good rest now. Yes, I will. And thanks loads. Come on, Kitty. Come on. We're going to take a nap. And don't you dare talk to me now. Relieved by her friend's assurance, Lois takes a sedative, pulls down the shades, and climbs into bed. The fawn-colored cat springs to the foot of the bed and regards her with curious blue eyes. Mm. Good night, Kitty. And don't go to sleep yet, Miss Lane. No. Don't. I said don't go to sleep yet, Miss Lane. Perry White, your enemy, was just here. <gasps> he means great harm to you. 
He's driving you out of your mind. Listen to me, Miss Lane. He means you harm. Terrified, Lois presses her hand to her mouth to stifle a scream in her throat. Is the cat talking to her, or is she going out of her mind? Tomorrow's episode is tense and exciting, so don't miss hearing the strange story of the talking cat.